It's a beautiful sunny spring day here in San Marcos. We're pushing 2 p.m. and it is 75 degrees Fahrenheit and clear skies. It looks like it's a bit bumpy up there today, but we're still gonna go have some fun nonetheless. So last week I went up to Lano with a friend and I said, hey, while we're here, I wanna do some pattern work on the grass runway. Come on. Oh, there she is. That's where you just roll onto the landing gear. And I forgot how fun it was to just go play around on a grass runway. So I'm gonna do something a little different today and I'm gonna use that camera angle on the head strap. We're gonna hop up to Lano and go do some pattern work on the grass runway. Plus, honestly, who doesn't like legit soft field takeoffs and landings? So what's the difference between a regular takeoff and landing and a soft field takeoff and landing? Well, you have a soft field. That's exactly what it means. So when you're landing or taking off on grass, we assume that it's going to be muddy or maybe soft or whatnot. And it's different on a nose wheel airplane than it is on a tail wheel airplane. Many, many people prefer a tail wheel airplane if they're going to be landing off pavement. And I agree, it's just more practical. A Cessna 172 is really a great nose wheel airplane to be able to take on grass. We've got regular size tires on this airplane, but we don't have wheel pants. Not having wheel pants, in my opinion, helps. The name of the game is keeping the airplane as light as possible on the landing gear. You don't want to stop on the soft surface and you want to keep the weight off the nose gear as much as you can. That means we're gonna taxi with full back pressure with the elevators all the way up, and we're gonna do that all the way through the rollout after we land, and when we're taxiing, we taxi with the wheel all the way back. When we're ready for takeoff, we're not gonna stop, we're just gonna keep the turn coming around, line up with the runway, and advance the power steadily to full. So I'll explain all of that as we go while we're in the airplane. We're good on fuel, we're good on oil, let's pull this airplane out and head up towards land. Clear. All right, avionics coming on. Dell 1850 Zulu. Wind 050 at Niner, gust 15, visibility 10. Sky right, conditions clear ground. below 12,000. Temperature 24. 2.1 2 .1 0. 0. Alpha 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 Visual approach is in use landing and departing runway 8. Note them. Runway 1, 7, now you get back up towards the rail. Parachute jumping in progress over Fentress, located eight and a half miles southeast of San Marcos. On initial contact, advise you have information, hotel. San Marcos Airport, should have been looking at the airport diagram. All right, got a Centurion coming over there. We got information, hotel. We're going to taxi off for a northbound, via, uh, or northwestbound, rather, VFR departure. San Marcos Ground, Skyhawk 80991. Skyhawk 80991, San Marcos Ground. 80991, Cessna 172 Information Hotel over here at the T-Hangers like to taxi out for a northwest VFR departure. Cessna 991, runway 8, taxi V Alpha. 8 V Alpha, 80991. Alright, we're clear right, we're clear left. The pre-taxi checklist is complete. So today is a tad gusty. Wind here at San Marcos is reporting 050 at Niner, gusting up to 15. But it should be a good day to practice some landings. Alright, parking brake is set, run-up checklist brakes are set, and the fuel selector is on both. Trim set for takeoff. Flight control's free and correct, that one goes up, that one goes down, that one goes up, that one goes down, elevators up and down, rudder, left and right, and check for freedom of movement. Alright, flight controls are free and correct, instruments cross-check and calibrate, and we got the heading bug set to runway heading, and the HSI and the compass do agree. Mixture set for best power, we're going to go full rich, the primer is in and locked, and throttle up to 1700 RPM. I'm going to close the windows here. Looking for 1700 right here on the engine monitor. Alright, and we're going to check the right mag. There's a drop and left mag out. Rising four EGTs. Back to both. Comes back up to 1700. Annunciation is gone. Do the left mag. Right mag out. There's a drop. Rising four EGTs. Back to both. They stabilize. RPM comes back up. Looks great. Car beat test. Pull the car heat all the way out. Carburetor temp comes up, drop an RPM. Push the car heat in. Carb temp comes back down. RPM recovers. And vacuum. We don't have an amps volts 13.2. That looks normal. Oil pressure oil temp are both in the green. Idle check closed and the throttle friction lock set. All 
All right, idling about 900 RPM, that's great. Restore it back to 1,000, the friction lock is set. We're right here by the runway, flaps set zero to 10. Flaps are all the way up. Mixture is set for best power. The carburetor heat is off. Transponder is squawking altitude VFR. The heading bug is set to runway heading, 080. Doors and windows closed and latched. We're closed and latched. Landing light is on. Strobes, we'll get them on when we get clear for takeoff. And the time note, 1931, and the flight timer will start when we depart. And brakes release, abort plan. If we're not off by runway 1331, something is definitely wrong. Our takeoff roll should be way shorter than that. And, uh, and we'll abort the takeoff if we're not off by then. If anything happens below 1,000 feet AGL, or before we turn out, whichever happens first, we will pick somewhere, we'll nose down and pick somewhere plus or minus 30 degrees in front of us. If we've already turned out or we're above 1,000 feet, we can entertain the thought of turning back to the runway. That's our abort plan. The pre-takeoff checklist is complete. We'll switch to tower. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk 80991, holding short of runway 8 at Alpha, ready for VFR departure. Skyhawk 80991, San Marcos Tower, hold short of runway 8. Hold short, runway 8, 80991. Is that airplane doing a touch and go, or is he full stop? His flaps are coming up. Hard to tell, I don't think he's accelerating. Just now 4 Victor Kilo, Fable right, turn yeah. out Bravo, contact ground now. Alright, turn at Bravo, going to ground for Victor Kilo. We'll get cleared here in a second. 80991, runway 8, clear for takeoff, left turn northwest approved. Left turn to the northwest, runway one, uh, runway 8, clear for takeoff, 80991, thanks. Almost said 13. Alright, we're clear left, and the runway is clear, it's ours. Entered runway 08, 6,200 feet remaining. Four Yankee, five miles. Four Yankee, report the uh, midfield downwind. Midfield downwind. All right, heels to the floor. Yeah, Marcus Tower, helicopter three four zero, Papa Mike. Got three four zero, Papa Mike, San Marcus Tower. Yeah, we're about ten. Left miles, crosswind, uh, takeoff power like is set. The air speed's alive. Helicopter zero, Papa Mike, report. Uh, about three south, uh, west of the airport uh, for the transition. Now San Marcos altimeter is 3028. All right, report three south, about uh, zero pop All right, climbing out, there's 80 knots, and here's 500 feet, so we can make our turn out to the northwest. We're clear left. Nice and bumpy today. Swing our heading bug around. And the climb checklist. Speed 70 to 80. We've got it. We're climbing about almost 90. Power is set full. Mixture is set full. Instruments cross-checked and calibrated. Altimeter is still a good. Heading bug is right where it should be and the heading looks good. Taxi light off and flight plan open. We'll get the landing light off. We'll contact. Austin approach whenever we're cleared off this frequency. Climb checklist complete. 80991, we have that traffic at our about 2 o'clock now. 9991, uh, roger, free exchange, we're good, 80. We'll see. Alright, yeah, it's a boonie right down there. Well over a thousand feet below. Climb 3307, descend and maintain 5000. 5000, climb 3307. Austin approach, Skyhawk 80991. Calling for flight following standby and remain outside of glass trailer space. We'll go. Alright, cruise checklist. Power is set. We got it. 2450 on the RPM. Mixture is set. We just leaned it. Rich a peak. And instruments cross checked and calibrated. We're right on course. Altimeters are set and cross checked and the heading looks good to the HSI. Cruise checklist complete. It's 52 degrees Fahrenheit up here. That's 11 Celsius. Look up going for flight following. Go ahead. Skyhawk 80 at 991. We're a Cessna 172, approximately uh, 1.5 miles to northwest of the San Marcos Airport, 4,500 up to Lano. We're 9091, squawk 4545. 4545 on the squawk, 991. 
we have to call in flight following semi. May not say class Charlie or space. Zero problem. Also, departure correct zero one's passing 3.4 for 4,000. Cessna 9 one radar contact. Two zero miles northwest of San Marcos Airport. Altitude indicates 4,400. Austin altimeter 3028. Maintain VFR. 3028. Altitude checks 9 one Engine looks happy. Temps look happy. Departure correct zero Back up with you. Correct, zero one, thank you. And Josh isn't happy okay, about sir, the pumps. Papa Mike's walk, zero two one zero. Zero two one zero. Cessna nine or nine or one contact Houston. Correction, uh, Houston Center one three four point two. One three four two eight zero nine or nine or one. Get it. Right, over to Houston Center. Houston Center Skyhawk eight zero nine or nine or one four thousand five hundred. Eight zero nine nine one Houston Center uh, Roger. Aviation 101, how are you doing? Doing good, we're rolling cameras. All right. About 3,300, kind of cost approach, one more Sounds like that was a shout out from a fan. Yeah, 3,300. Always oh, cool. All right, 40 miles out of Lano. I see Lake Buchanan up there. We got Lake Travis just off to our right, and then Lake LBJ is going to be that way-ish. I lied, that way-ish. And Lano's beyond that. This is just the Colorado River. Spicewood's going to be right that way-ish. Yes, I got that right. Spicewood is right out there. Lakeway, Laga Vista, out that way. And Lake LBJ, so Marble Falls and Kingsland and all that good stuff is going to be up that way. And then Lake Buchanan's out there. Lano's on the other side of Lake Buchanan. Our hottest cylinder is running 350 degrees. That's number three. And cylinder number one, well now number two, it's bouncing back and forth. The hottest EGT is 1390, or almost 1400 degrees, so we're pretty good. That's about where I like to ride it, about 1400 degrees there. I can actually pull the power back just a little bit. Got approximately two and a half hours of fuel left on board, so that'll give us plenty of time to get to Lano and have some fun on the grass runway, and then we'll stop and gas up and head back to San Marcos. The grass runway is 3,200 feet long, so that's plenty long for this airplane to be able to do a touch and go on it. However, for soft field takeoff, or yeah, for a soft field takeoff, we want flaps to be set to 10 degrees. So basically, on a touch and go, it's going to be too hard for me to get the flaps set to 10 with this uh, full, with the full range flap switch in this airplane. So I'll just do a full stop and then turn around, and taxi back. Houston American. Uh 35 with you out of 8,700 for 139. America 35, Houston Center, Columbia Italian, Flavel 230. Crossing over a river here. Let's see, what do we just cross? That's the Pertinalis River. Center, Reiki, Very zero, picturesque. Reiki 0, taking VFR at 7,500. Reiki 0, Houston Center, uh, gray altimeter 3030. 3030, Reiki 0. Right, about 18 minutes out. There's Horseshoe Bay Airport right up there. This is Lake LBJ. Spicewood Airport right up there. And traffic for 17, right hand traffic for 31 grass. Lano Municipal Airport, Automated Weather Observation 1, Niner 5, 5, Zulu Weather, Wind 1, 0, 0, at 6, Visibility 1, 0, 0, Clear below 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, All right, wind was 100 at 6, so that's going to be runway 13 on the grass runway. That'll work. And since we will be using runway 13, that will be left traffic. So from here, we're just, we'll just kind of make a bit of a right-hand deviation when we cancel with the center, and, uh, and that'll put us on the correct side of the airport to enter the left downwind for 13. And I'll go ahead and put CTAF in the standby, 122.8. And I don't suspect the pattern will be too incredibly crowded today, given that it's a weekday. It's a Tuesday. 
If it were a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon, it would be crowded. Villain one, go ahead. Engine's looking great, fuel flow's looking great. It says we're going to have 15.5 gallons remaining when we get to the airport. Villain one, Roger, stand by. And that's about a gallon on the conservative side. Based on my experience with this totalizer, so that's good. Good, good. So I got the weather, now I'm just looking for the airport, which is actually, uh, we're still a good ways out. Delta 2894, climb maintain flight level 180. Delta 2894, up to 180. Alright, I see the town of Lano up there on the other side of the hills, and I believe I see the airport just to the north of the town. Stand by. There's Horseshoe Bay Airport right down there, Lake LBJ. 14, 17, and 1, 1,000 for 1, 2,000. And across the, uh, the waterway up there is the town of Kingsland. Jetblue 14, 17, Houston, Centicon, maintain flight level 230. Up to flight level 230, Jetblue 14, 17. Bill on 3, stand by. I do have the airport in sight. I'm not going to tell him quite yet, though. I don't want him to cut me loose. I'm still 20 miles out. I get the villain one. I show you 300 feet above your assigned altitude. Maintain 17,000. Use uh, San Antonio altimeter 3025. I get about 15 miles from the airport, so about another seven miles. I'll let him know Houston, that I have Houston, the assignment. Houston, 790, the one 2000 for 1200. Exactly 790, contact Houston Center on 128.65. 2865, 790, see ya. Center Skyhawk A0991, we have the weather at Lano, we got the airport in sight. No Ray 0991, uh, Roger. Um, no uh, traffic between you and the airport, then. Squawk VFR and change with advisory. We'll squawk and talk VFR A0991, good day. Yeah. Villain 3, uh, reset your transponder, squawk 2426. Yep. I will announce that we are about 14 to the southeast. And that we're going to enter left down one runway one three. Full stop. Leno. Leno traffic Skyhawk eight zero nine nine one Cessna one seventy two about uh, fourteen miles to the southeast of the field four thousand five hundred. We're going to enter the left down one runway one three. Full stop. Leno. Right, so traffic the blue one RV back taxi runway one seven five six. So we got the city of Leno, the town of Leno down there. And then just to the right of it, I see the airport. The airport's kind of a V-shape. It's kind of like this. You got the paved runway right here. And then you got the grass runway right here. We're almost lined up with the grass runway. We're going to kind of go out a little bit and enter the left down. Southern there. traffic 57 Golf is now turning downwind on runway 35. The lovely frequency of 122.8 on a clear skies day is always chucked full. There's just the people talking constantly. Clear people talking constantly. Alright, we're starting the VFR descent. Descent checklist mixture enriching. Fuel selector is still on both, and the car beat is as required. Standard we don't need it yet. We got the ATIS, AWAS, altimeters are set, and instruments cross-check and calibrate. Descent checklist complete. Hail traffic, our traffic 7234, helicopter 7 miles southeast will be inbound for landing. 35 Taylor. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, about 5 miles to the southeast of the field, descending out of 4000. We're going to enter the left downwind for runway 13, full stop, Lano. When we get down here to the airport, we'll make it four, we'll do four grass landings. I think that'll be good. Four, that'll be four grass landings and takeoffs. Alright, we're great on fuel. We've got 15 gallons left, according to both the gauges and the totalizer. And engine looks great. Watching our shock cool factor there, minus 30 degrees per minute, which is great. And pattern altitude is 2100 feet. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is about two miles to the east of the field. We're entering the 45 left downwind runway 13. Full stop. Lano. Let's see what the winds are doing again. Lano Municipal Airport, automated weather observation 2012 Zulu weather. Wind 0, 9 0 at 6. Visibility more than 1, 0. Sky condition clear below 1, 2000. Temperature 2, 5 Celsius. 2.8 Celsius. 
altimeter three zero three zero remark okay wind really hasn't changed much Lano traffic Skyhawk eight zero nine nine one is on the left downwind for runway one three grass Lano nice good we got a helicopter down there on the ramp other than that there's nobody here looks like somebody at their T hangar and that's the grass runway here at Lano there's a few dirt patches but it's a pretty smooth runway all right so we're a beam. Pulling the carb heat and back to about 1500 RPM. And we're pitching the nose up till we get in the wide arc. There it is, 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. And the mixture's full rich. Our lights are on, fuel selector on both, and we're all good. Brakes, pedal test. Helicopter 661 Tango Victor is about 3 miles. Let the nose come down. The field inbound for fuel will be landed direct. Torture Bay. Mm. Terrain ahead. The pre landing checklist is complete. That's four flights saying warning terrain. Alright, turn base here. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, turning left base, runway 13, grass, full stop, Lano. About 70 knots here in the turn. I'm going to add a little bit of power. I can feel it. We, we're sinking. But right here, we do not want to pull the nose up and get real slow in the turn. You're asking for a stall and potentially a spin if you do that. There's 500 feet AGL according to four flight, and our final looks clear. Speed's good. I'm going to add just a scotch of power here. Lano traffic, Skyhawk, 80991 on final runway 13, full stop, grass, Lano. Short final runway 13. All right, thank you for flight. Bay traffic, helicopter 661, Tango Victor, two miles east, inbound, landing direct, ramp for fuel, Marsh Bay. And I like to carry a little extra speed on final. I come in faster than most people do in a 172. I like about 70 knots on final. Then on short final, I bring it back to about 65, 60, and let the airplane start slowing down. I'm going to add flaps 20 here. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. There's flaps set 20 degrees, and power is at idle. We just got an updraft there. All right, runway looks good. I don't see any obstacles. We're going to execute a soft field procedure here. We're going to touch the pavement with a little extra forward, or touch the grass with a little extra forward momentum. Burn and just hold her off and touch it gently. 1 2 7 5 0, on a right base for runway 1. Let's go. Just hold her off. Hold her off. Hold her off. A little bumpy down here. Or a little bounce. Keep that nose gear off. Keep that nose gear off. That was a lot bumpier down here than I thought it would be. As far as the air moving around, we were kind of wavering and losing speed there. All right. There's Lano. I can do a heck of a lot better than that one. I think. <laughs> At least I have in the past. All right, so that's one landing. Okay, traffic, no car beats in. One, take up the third, full final landing. All right, the car beats set, and I'm gonna announce back taxiing. Lano traffic, Skyhawk eight zero nine nine or one is back taxiing runway one three grass. We're gonna depart and remain in the pattern, Lano. Yeah, the grass got a little taller here since I was here a few days ago. We're gonna drop ten degrees of flaps. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. There's 10 degrees of flaps, that's what we'll use for departure. And the pre-takeoff checklist flaps are set 10, mixture is set for best power. The car beats off, transponder, heading mode, doors and windows, landing lights, strobes, time, brakes, release, and abort plan. I use about half the runway. This airplane at 10 degrees of flaps while executing a soft field takeoff technique is going to get off the ground right about 40 knots. That's when you can really feel the, the main start to come off the ground. So we really, the airplane really reacted to getting into ground effect when we got down here. And we got, we got some good thermals okay, coming. Runway one, three, three, uh, one. Four flight. We got some really good thermals coming over the highway and coming over the edge of runway one, seven. So that kind of pushed us up, 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 up. And I kept keeping the nose down so we could still, you know, we're not going to overshoot the runway. And, uh, and that caused us to be really fast coming over the threshold. We were about 70 knots over the threshold. But that's okay, we had plenty of runway, just hold it off and let the speed bleed. So we got two triplets of white tires there. That's, those are basically the end, ends of the runway, the threshold. 
to notice I'm keeping the yoke all the way back while I'm taxiing here. All right, the pre-takeoff checklist is complete. We'll announce. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, departing runway 13, grass. We're going to main in left traffic, Lano. All right, so we're not going to stop. Holding the yoke back. Lining up on it. And start to ease the power to full. Take off power set. And I'm holding the node, the cowling right below the horizon. That's keeping the nose gear off the ground. There's 35 knots. We're off the ground and we're going to level off right here in ground effect. Let the airplane build up speed. There's 65 knots. And we're able to gently fly right out of ground effect. And I'm going to keep those flaps in until I've got at least VY, which is 78 knots, and then I can pull the flaps up. I also want to have a few hundred feet of altitude. Get a little nose down trim in there. All right, there's 80 knots. Flaps coming up. There's a little bit of a sink. There we go. You want to make sure you have sufficient speed when you pull those flaps up, because when you pull the flaps up, you're actually getting rid of some lift production there on the wings. There goes our speed way up, so now we can just pitch up and climb out. Very good. There's our shadow way down there. So that was one grass landing, and a mighty bad one at that. I, I came down and kind of touched the grass and bounced, but the important thing was I kept the nose gear off the ground. Don't ever let that nose gear plow into the ground when you're landing on a soft field. Well, any field for that matter, but particularly important on a soft field. All right. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is turning on a left crosswind for runway 13, left closed traffic, Lano. Alright, there's a the grass runway up there, we'll go ahead and turn downwind. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is turning on a left downwind, runway 13 will be a full stop, taxi back, Lano. Alright, there's 2100 feet, which is pattern altitude, that's 1000 feet above the airport. Roll the power back just a little bit and level off here, about 100 feet high actually. All right, so here on downwind, I'm going to perform a uh, pre-landing checklist, and then I'll do a gump. So pedal test, lights are on, autopilot's off, seatbelts, shoulder harnesses, the mixture is rich, and carp heat is on. We'll do that in the gumps, and fuel selector on both flaps is required. It's much easier to do the checklist on downwind instead of a beam the numbers when I'm starting to descend and stuff. Traffic 750, short final, zero 01. A beam the numbers is a good time to do a gumps, kind of like a, a follow-up. Alright, runway looks good. We did have kind of a, a bit of a dip there where that dirt is at the beginning of the runway, so I may taxi in front of it next time. Alright, so we're a beamy at landing point, carpet's coming out, and the throttle is coming back to about 1500. Right, traffic command chief 7743 Papa, 10 miles north inbound. Burn it. And we're pitching the nose up. Just holding our altitude right here with a reduced power setting until we get the wide arc on the airspeed, and there it is. First notch of flaps, 1-1000, one, 2-1000, one, 3 one, There's 10 degrees of flaps to help us slow down and fly at a slower speed while being able to produce a sufficient amount of lift. It allows us to make a steeper approach, to, uh, steeper approach. Warning, terrain ahead. Yes, I know. Terrain. Terrain, terrain. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is turning on a left base for runway 13, full stop on the grass, Lano. And we'll just keep that turn coming around to final. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 keeping the turn coming to final, runway 13, full stop on the grass, Lano. We are a bit low here. Just fix it with power. I extended my uh, the downwind just a little bit because yeah, I, did, I think I did that subconsciously because last time we were super high, now we're a little bit low. But when we come over the highway and the edge of the runway and the taxiway there, we're probably going to get some pretty good thermals. I bet you there's a good amount of heat kind of blowing this way off the Vernon ramp traffic. too. Cessna one, that one two seven five zero is turning from cross Second notch of flaps, to one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Approximately 20 degrees flaps. And we're coming down here on short final. Qu 
some nose up trim and we actually look good here we're a little slow so I might add just a touch of power in the flare just to get that and forward momentum midfield. going we actually look really good right here but we're flaring we're flaring and uh, traffic we hold the nose up. Hold the nose will uh, be behind you we'll enter up one one nine burn it we're holding the nose up nice that one was a little better Runway now is runway one. All right, Leno traffic, Sky K zero nine nine one back taxiing on the grass, Leno. All right, that one was a little better, a little better. I still came down a little bit hard, and I think that was partly because I didn't add enough power there at the end. I actually didn't even add any power. I didn't think I needed it. So the flaps are coming up. All right, pre-takeoff flap set 10 degrees, mixture is set for best power, the car beat is off. Transponder squawking altitude, 1200. Heading bug, doors and windows, lights are all on. The time note, brakes release abort plan. All right, and actually I did say I was gonna pull forward of this dirt here, because there's a bit of a dip in the dirt. Entered runway 13, 3100. Lano traffic, Sky 80991 is taking off runway at 13 grass. We're gonna make left traffic, Lano. All right, holding the yoke back. We're not stopping. Standard traffic, Tomahawk, 62 Charlie, right, right 5 miles east. Take off power set, three miles I'm holding the cowling just below the horizon there. Crossing overhead at Keeping the nose off the ground. We're off the ground, so let's level off here ground Charlie. effect. Hey, we'll be across the midfield at 3,700 feet right now, traffic. And there she is, she's flying out of ground effect. We'll accelerate through 70 and then let it come up through VY, and then once we're at VY, we'll retract the flaps. Alright, there's 80 knots. Flaps coming up. Decent soft field takeoff there. The name of the game is to keep the nose off the ground. And don't stop. You don't want to get stuck on the soft surface. Now, of course, this surface is nice and hard. It's packed down and well maintained. 743 Papa turning right base, runway 1, burn it. Alright. Lano traffic, Sky 80991 turning on the left crosswind, runway 1, 3. Full stop, Lano. Let's see if we can make this one a little bit better, a little bit softer. We just, we don't really want to come down on the landing gear, we kind of want to kind of roll onto the landing gear. On the grass there. We got an airplane across midfield right up there. Alright. Clear beam and car beat out, power is coming back. We're going to maintain altitude here while the speed rolls back. Meanwhile, let's roll through the pre-landing checklist, brakes pedal test. Lights, autopilot, seat belts, mixture, car peat is on, fuel flaps, fuel's on both, and we're in the wide arc, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, there's 10 degrees of flaps, pre-landing checklist complete, Lano traffic, Skyhawk 8, 0, 9, 9, 9, 1, about to turn left, base runway 1, 3, full stop, on the grass, Lano. Alert, terrain ahead. Yes, I know. I am approaching Earth, that is the point of a landing, Siri. Alright, turning on the left base, nose down. 70 knots. Add a scotch of power in the turn here so we don't lose too much energy. And I'm going to go ahead and announce final. Kind of like turning on your blinker. You want to announce Lano traffic, early. Tomahawk 2462 Charlie. Departing to the south. 2,000 feet. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is on final runway 13. Full stop, Lano. One mile final runway one two. Horseshoe Bay traffic, I see Cup 9 Bay Bravo is about four miles out to the north. Right, let's go ahead and start the, helping us uh, slow down. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Three one thousand. That's flaps twenty degrees. And that's gonna cause us to kind of balloon up here a little bit. Speed up here, about 65 knots here on final. Put some nose up trim. There's a sinker. Kind of caused us to sink there. Need a little more power.
All right, about 65 knots. My power is coming to idle. And we'll get down to the runway and we'll add just a scotch of power. A little bit of right rudder to correct that crosswind. Here we are coming down to the runway. Tiny bit of power, tiny bit of power. Come on. Oh, there she is. That's where you just roll onto the landing gear. Holding that back pressure in there. Holding that back pressure in there. I'm very gently applying the brakes. I don't want to apply the brakes too much at all because you don't want to dig that nose gear into the ground at all. Very light on the brakes, just enough to slow it down a little bit. Leno traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is back taxiing runway 13. Leno. Not bad at all. That was three. Go up and do one more, and then we'll uh, we'll taxi into the pumps. Free takeoff, flap set. Zero to ten, we're going to take ten degrees. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. There's ten degrees. Mixture is set for best power, we get the car peed off, and we're still squawking altitude VFR. The heading bug is set. Doors and windows, lights, got them all on, time, no brakes, release, and abort plan. And we're going to turn short of the end of the runway there again, so I don't miss that, uh, so I don't hit that little dirt patch there. Lano traffic, Scott 80991 taking off runway 13, going to be left closed traffic, Lano. All right, hold the back pressure and lining it up on the runway. Don't stop, don't stop. Increase power to take off and start to release the back pressure and I'm holding the cowling right on the horizon there. And she's airborne, release the back pressure. Let it come down, level off and ground effect. Let her pick up some speed. And we're out of ground effect, climbing out. A little bit of a goofy wind there. As we clear the tree line, the wind kind of changes direction. Nose down trim, build up some speed. Coming through 80 knots. No, not, don't pull them up yet. Airspeed is a little unstable there for just a second. All right, it's stabilized. We got a good 80 knots, flaps coming up. All right, let me say we do one more grass landing, we'll go to the pumps. Pre-landing check, this brakes pedal test, lights, we got them all on, autopilot's off, seat belts, shoulder harnesses are on, mixture is set for best power. We'll get the car beat on here in a second. Fuel selector on both and flaps is required. We'll do that after we are a beam. The pre-landing checklist is complete. We're hauling booty. We're going 110 knots here on downwind. We definitely have a tailwind right now. I got it powered back. There's the left downwind. And we're a beam. Almost a beam to touchdown point, so the Carpet's coming out. We've been floating a lot, like really far down, not really far, but on that last one particularly, I floated pretty far down the runway. And I wasn't a fan of that. I want to see if I can do that a little better. So I'm going to ease the power back about 1500 RPM and maintain altitude till we're in the wide arc. Here's the wide arc. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000. I'm counting because I have to hold down the button or hold down the switch. About 3 seconds is 10 degrees. About another three seconds is 20 degrees, about another three is 30. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, turning on a left base for runway 13, full stop on the grass, Lano. Alright, 70 knots, keep our speed up here. Nice and coordinated, keeping that ball in the center with the rudder in the turn here. Super important, super important. Looking for traffic, looking for traffic. There's our runway. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, turning final, runway 13 on the grass. Full stop, Lano. About 70 knots here. I do kind of have, have a stiff wind from this direction. I can see the track vector on the, on the HSI, we're crabbing. Alright, let's add another notch, 1-1000. Two one thousand, three one thousand. Each time you add flaps, you're actually lowering the stall speed of the airplane just a little bit. That's why we're able to get the airplane so slow uh, when uh, we're about to touch the runway. You're lowering the stall speed by pulling flaps. So if you don't drop any flaps, you're actually going to touch the ground. The airplane's going to stall out and touch the ground at a much higher ground speed, much higher airspeed too. All right, power is on idle. Add a couple scotches of trim there, about 60, just over 60 knots here. Get some crosswind correction in there, we do have an early crosswind. And I don't really 
need any power. We've got, God, the thermals are keeping us up in the air. There we go. I like that one. Little bump there. And just aer using aerodynamic braking by pulling the uh, elevators back. Pulling them up so they're kind of deflecting up and causing a lot of drag. Which helps slow us down and I'm lightly, very, very gently applying the brakes. Man, it's like as soon as you get right down to the dirt it just like picks you up and it just kind of carries you down the runway at like four feet above the runway. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is back taxiing runway 13. We're going to the pumps, Lano. I like those. I like those landings. Those last two particularly were good. That third one, I floated a lot down the runway. I just like kept floating, kept floating, kept floating. And even that one, I kept floating too. Like, look, I, I mean, it's hard to see on the GoPro, but I'm a long way from the tires. I blame that on two things. I think the main reason I was floating so far is just because I'm coming in too darn fast. And I think the other reason is because it's just, I mean, it is a hot day. And I'm coming down to the grass, and as soon as you get into ground effect over the grass, and the ground is hot, you're just it's just going to kind of push you up, push you up until you lose enough energy where the thermals aren't holding you up anymore, and then you settle down onto the grass. All the blue bonnets. The state flower of Texas. Alright, good stuff, good stuff. We'll pick up this line right here onto the ramp. And we'll do a takeoff on the grass on the way out. All right, we can relax that back pressure now that we're on pavement. Lano traffic, Skyhawk 80991, clear of all runways, Lano. All right, lights off. Avionics. Between all the crazy long trips I've been taking lately from one end of the country to the other, I can't even begin to explain how refreshing it feels to climb into this airplane and just go back to basics for a change. Don't get me wrong, the epic films that come out of the great trips I've done are so fun to produce and they really satisfy my passion for filmmaking, like scratching an itch, sort of. But doing flights like this are just as good. No schedule to meet or plans to stick to, just some solo pattern work on a wide open grass runway under a wide open blue sky. It seriously doesn't get any better than that. Not to mention that as we advance as pilots, we can sometimes forget that we need to brush up on the simple stuff like pattern work, and I think this round of grass landing showed me that I need to work on slowing down my final approach and try to not float as far. I could use the ground thermals as an excuse, but I know they're only partly to blame. A lot of the floating down the runway had to do with me carrying too much energy on final. You certainly do not want to get too slow on final, but I think I was too fast. That's another excuse for me to get in the airplane and go out and sharpen my skills. I hope you got something out of this video, whether you're an aspiring student, private, or professional pilot. We all have something to learn from each other at every experience level, and if you carry that attitude both in and out of the cockpit, you'll never stop improving yourself. Let me know if you liked this video, and if you'd like to see more long, raw flying videos like this. If you liked it, then certainly give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on notifications by ringing that bell. I release videos every week. If you'd like to support the channel, you can head over to aviation101.com store and shop merch and gear, including the flight notes pad I was using on this flight. Those are on my e-store and new shirts are coming soon as well. Until next time, I encourage you to go out and practice your skills. Don't be afraid to revisit the simple stuff and go back to basics. I want you to stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and of course, stay proficient. Fly safe and we'll see you in the next one.